Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit drums without using stretch markers in Reaper. Now, there's two different methods I use for drum editing, with and without stretch markers. In a previous video, I showed you the first way, with them. In this video, I'm going to show you the other way. Each method has its advantages. Stretch markers allows us to quantize less and retain more of the original performance or feel. But it does require a time stretching algorithm, which means it does degrade the sound a bit. This method won't, as we're just going to cut up the drums and not actually apply any processing to them. So let's dig in. We have a multi mic drum performance in front of us that we want to edit. Let's hear what it sounds like. Now let's hear it with the click or the metronome. Notice it's not that tight with the click. So we're going to quantize these drums to make them tighter and put them right in the grid. The first thing we want to do is group the drums because they are multi mic'd. We have a kick, a snare, a snare bottom, a pair of toms, a pair of overheads, a pair of room mics, and a far room. So we need to keep these tracks in sync. So every cut or edit or quantizing needs to be the same on every track. So we need to group them. So let's select them all like this, go to the item menu and go to group and choose group items. We could also do it with the keystroke. Just hit G and that's gonna group our items. And we can see it right here with the button. That tells us that these items are grouped. But we also need to turn on item grouping over here. So now I could grab one and they all move together. But if you notice right now, if I select one, they all get selected. We need to turn that off for this method. So just right click over here and turn off. Selecting one item selects the group. And I could select this one and still treat it like a group, but it only selects the item we choose, like snare or kick. That's important for this method. And we should also go to the options menu and turn on auto crossfade media items when editing. Turn that on and also turn on trim content behind media items when editing. This is going to crossfade automatically which makes things sound smoother. And this is going to trim the content, so we're only hearing one thing at a time. The media items won't overlap, and we'll always be hearing what we want. So turn this on as well. So now we need to choose which drums we want to analyze. For instance, we could do just the kick, just the snare, the kick and snare, or the kick, snare, and the toms, and even the overheads to pick up the hi-hat. I'm going to do the kick and snare because I prefer to quantize less things. But depending on the song, you might need to quantize more, like the hi-hats or the toms. And we also need to pick in which order we're going to analyze them. For instance, let's say the kick was playing at the same time as our snare. If we chose the kick first, that would have priority over the snare when they're playing together. So in those situations, I tend to use the snare first, as it will take priority over the kick if they hit together. The same thing happens for toms. Let's say you hit a four tom, at the same time you hit a snare. If we analyze the snare first, it's going to take priority over the four tom, which is how I usually do it. So let's start off with the snare. We'll select it, and now we're going to split it by its transients. So go to View and choose Dynamic Split. And that opens up this dialog where we can split our items based on the transients. So we'll turn off when gate opens and when gate closes. We don't need those two, but we want this on at transients. 
So it's going to split points at our transients. So now we need to choose what transients to pick. Let's go down here to set the transient sensitivity. And right here, we can adjust our threshold. I could choose this option, display threshold in media items. And that's going to create horizontal lines over here. As we bring the threshold down, see these horizontal lines? That lets us know what it's going to grab. The lower it goes, the more it grabs. So if we bring this down below the snare, it's going to grab those snares. If we make it too high, it doesn't. And we can see what it's going to grab by these dotted lines on each transient. It's going to grab all those. So make sure we bring it down enough to grab every hit. Then we can close this and choose split. Now if we split it now with this option, split selected items, it's just going to split what we selected, just the snare. That's not going to work. We need to split all the drum tracks at the same spot to keep them in sync. So let's undo that, select it again, open dynamic split, and choose this instead. Split selected and grouped items. And that's going to split all these items in the same place based on the snare. So we'll split it, and it splits them all based on the snare transient. So now we have to do the same thing for the kick. Let's double click the kick track to select all the kick items, open dynamic split, and do the same thing. Set the transient sensitivity right here. Make sure it goes low enough to grab all the kicks like that. Split them here. And now we split all the drums based on the kick. Notice the snare splits are still there. Now we're just going to do the kick and snare. If we want to do the toms, we just do the same thing. Or the overheads. If we wanted to grab all those hi-hats, just bring it down low enough so it grabs them all. But we're not going to do that. Because I don't want to quantize any more than we need. So now let's select any of the tracks. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's choose the snare. Go to item. And go to item processing. And down over here, we can quantize item positions to the grid. Now by default, there's no keystroke for this. But I made mine a Q. It makes it a lot quicker if you edit drums a lot, which I do. So you can change that in the actions menu. So let's choose this. It opens up this dialog where we can quantize our items. I'm going to change this to 16th notes because I'm pretty sure there's a 16th note fill later on in the song. And if we choose this now, it just quantized the snare track. Let's open it back up. We could choose this option here. Move grouped items with selected items. So that's going to quantize all the drums at the same time which looks like that. But if we zoom in, there is a problem. It creates these little gaps when the items are too short, when they're being moved. There is a way to fix that. Let's undo it. If we choose these two items here, extend starts of items to overlap with earlier items, and we could shorten items if the quantized items overlap by more than a certain amount. If we choose these, it's going to prevent those gaps. It's going to fill them and crossfade them. Now it's set to 30 milliseconds by default. That's a bit too big. If we zoom in, these crossfades are a little too big for me. So let's undo that. And instead, let's make them 3 milliseconds. And now let's do it. Let's now quantize them all. Trim them so there's no gaps, and it also crossfaded them, which we can see why. If I hold on Shift to move the crossfade, see what happens? It has to crossfade back so I don't get a glitch. That hit was too early, so it made it later to be on the grid. So let's see what it sounds like. It 
It's a lot tighter, but I'm still hearing some glitching. Let's hear it against the click track. It sounds much better, but now it's fine tune all the edits. So we could zoom in right over here, make sure the kick looks good. And for this part, I like to turn on selecting one item selects the group. So if I trim this back, they all trim together. Let's make a crossfade for the beginning. And let's check out each one of our crossfades. See this one got mushy? Hold on shift and move it earlier to fix it. Now to quickly go through these, I'm gonna show you a keystroke. Just click right here. On the PC it's control, on the Mac it's command, and then just hit the brackets. Either to the right to go forward or to the left to go back. So we can quickly go through to check the edits. This one's off a bit. Hold on shift to move it over. That looks good. And go through each one to make sure there's no glitches. But even if we bring these over, our transients are right in the grid. So just quickly go through each one of these. And that looks pretty good. Now let's hear it back. Feels pretty good. And the sound quality is retained because we didn't stretch with an algorithm. We just put our items in different places. Now if you want to quantize anything manually afterwards, Let's say this hi-hat section right here, you open a hi-hat, just go in manually, mark it, split it by hitting S, turn on snapping, and just snap that item right to that eighth note. Then we can go in and bring this back, crossfade, fix the crossfade like this, go forward, because we messed this one up, Make it a bit shorter. Now we quantized just that open hi-hat. Make the crossfade a little better. Sounds pretty good. Now we just go through and do the rest of the song this way. So that's pretty much it. That's editing drums without using stretch markers in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.